Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by littleshaman.org. That's me, the little shaman. Today I want to talk to you about how to tell if you are a narcissist. A lot of people say they recognize many of the behaviors and traits that we talk about on this show in themselves, and they want to know how they can tell if they are a narcissist themselves. Now, as a general rule, It's usually said that if you think you might be a narcissist, you're probably not one. And that's true for the most part. People who are pathologically narcissistic are not usually capable of the insight and self-awareness that's required to make this type of assessment of themselves or to come to that conclusion. They may know intellectually that they're a narcissist if someone tells them that they are or if they're diagnosed, but that's usually as far as the information really goes. It's not connected to any definition of themselves or to their behavior. It has no real meaning for them as it relates to themselves. It's just information with no meaning. Denial plays a huge factor here as well. People who are pathologically narcissistic usually practice some seriously hardcore denial, so it would be unusual for them to come to the conclusion that they are in fact doing all the things we talk about on this show, such as manipulating others, attacking them for no reason, misperceiving things, and believing things that aren't true. It's more likely that they would just deny any culpability whatsoever, instead seeing themselves as victims who are being acted against rather than as attackers or predators who are acting on others. Because of their problems with projection, narcissists would be more likely to hear the things said on this show and claim that other people are doing that to them rather than see it in themselves. This is the way their disorder is set up. It's basically a malfunctioning defense mechanism designed to keep them from ever having to hear anything bad about themselves. So coming to the conclusion that they have a disorder and have been the so-called perpetrator or villain this entire time is pretty unlikely. That's not to say it can't happen though. Anything's definitely possible and everybody's different. But for the most part, it's more likely that people who feel they see these behaviors in themselves have narcissistic traits rather than that they're pathologically narcissistic. Pathological narcissism is inflexible. It cannot bend or adapt regardless of new information. This is why a narcissist will continue to argue or deny something even when they are demonstrably proven wrong or caught red-handed. It's all they know how to do. It's also why they seem to be unable to learn from mistakes or consequences. Regardless of how many times a certain behavior has backfired or ended up badly for them, they'll continue to repeat it as if they're stuck on a loop. Again, this is because it's all they know how to do. Their narcissistic traits are inflexible and not able to adapt. They cannot change them. Some of them can change their behavior if the behavior is no longer working for them in any way but their disordered thought process and flawed perception will remain the same. And really, it's more likely that they will change their environment and the people around them before they will change their behavior. This is one of the reasons they discard people. Once people have caught on to the act, then instead of changing their behavior to get the same result with different behavior, they just move on to somebody else who's not wise to their game yet. At any rate, narcissism is a spectrum, and the good news is that having narcissistic traits is not the end of the world. Lots of people have some, and if you recognize them and really apply yourself, you can change that. Narcissism doesn't have to be an all-or-nothing thing if it's not pathological. Practicing gratitude, using cognitive behavioral therapy techniques, or getting with a good therapist can help you figure things out. Now, just to be thorough, I'll give a few things that may be red flags for narcissism in yourself, but, I mean, really, pathological narcissists probably would not recognize these things in themselves anyway. They don't believe they're accusing people of things they didn't do or that they're unable to admit they're wrong. Most true narcissists would probably need to be told by somebody else. Of course, none of this is set in stone, but some things a person could ask themselves or ask someone else about themselves would be... Do I overreact to things that most people would not? Am I paranoid or oversensitive to criticism? Do I often feel that people are attacking me, mocking me, or that they have ulterior motives that they're hiding from me? Do I feel that I need to remind others of my worth so that they don't forget or make sure that my needs are not forgotten? Do I have a lot of issues with self-hatred? Do I believe I'm worthless, useless, or unlovable? Do I believe my feelings are facts? Do I have trouble accepting or controlling my emotions? 
Do I enjoy hurting other people or believe they deserve it when I'm upset or if I feel they've hurt me first? Do I think it's unforgivable or unacceptable to be wrong? Am I unable to admit that I'm wrong even when it's been proven? Do I consistently believe people have done or accuse people of things they didn't do? Do I believe my needs should always come before anything else and that other people should sacrifice themselves for me? Will I do anything to get what I want, even if it hurts me or hurts other people? Do I believe it's okay to take advantage of someone if I need something? Do I feel people owe me because I've had a hard life? Do I feel that people are trying to control me or control my thoughts or tell me how to feel? Now again, these things are not set in stone. There's a hundred more we could add, but truthfully, again, a pathologically narcissistic person most likely will not recognize most of these things in themselves anyway. The thought process, the insight, and the honesty that is required to answer many of these questions is generally beyond someone who's pathologically narcissistic. They don't believe they're overreacting, for example. They think the situation is a huge problem deserving of that reaction. They don't think their feelings are facts. They just think these things are facts, period. They don't think they're unable to admit they're wrong because they don't think they're wrong. They think they're right. Any things they did recognize, they may deny to themselves and out loud because they can't admit to being that kind of person. But I wanted to throw those in there just in the interest of being thorough. This is a hard subject to address, mostly because of the denial factor involved with narcissism in general. It's built into the disorder, which is why we say that if you think you could be one, you're probably not. However, if you do notice problem behaviors related to narcissistic traits, you can work on these and you can change them. A good cognitive behavioral therapist or dialectical behavioral therapist can work wonders, as can working on your self-esteem and developing more realistic thinking versus negative thinking and just assuming. Many of you may be thinking that some of the things listed here are the types of behaviors that abuse victims display. That's right, they are. Narcissists were often victims of abuse too. That's how many of them became what they are. I hope this clears a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please keep those coming. I'm sure you have your own questions that people could ask themselves to determine whether they may have a problem with narcissistic traits or behaviors, so feel free to post those in the comments as well. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by littleshaman.org. That's me, the Little Shaman. May the Great Spirit bless you and have a wonderful day.